Dirk Haltenhof, who has already managed luxury hotels as a culinary director in Dubai, Hong Kong, and Switzerland, has great respect for this task in Doha. Of course, the pressure mounts as we draw closer to the grand opening. Then it's the week before and you think, OK, here we go. The first guests are at the door and that's when it all kicks off. The supply wing for both hotels lies in the basement, connecting the two 220-meter tall towers. Everything that the luxury guests are not supposed to see happens here. In the future, the main kitchen will supply all the restaurants, bars and cafes. Cooking should have started here a long time ago. We're waiting for the gas to be turned on. Then we can get all the machinery going. We don't have any gas yet. We're currently using a small electric hot plate as our big gas cooker, but at least we can start cooking. We can already run tests, we can taste food. We can accept deliveries of goods because we need to practice all of that. The coordination is like that of the armed forces. So when, what arrives, where, how it's stored and how it's prepared later on. Inside the big unit here, when it's all ready, we'll be able to produce the bases for soups, sauces for, let's say, 5,000 people at once. So that'll be no problem. Until then, there is theoretical training for everyone, for thousands of dishes, and using just a small flame, for coming up with at least a few of the luxury snacks that the guests will find in their rooms as part of their welcome packs. The bakery is the only place where it's possible to already work under virtually normal conditions and to test which bread is best. So we will take out the, the bread uh, from Vaya. So we are uh, doing the trial. Nice. And uh, so this is the blue corn uh, bread. Ah, this is nice. The first, yeah. Oh, this is the first loaf, right? We've already tried the croissants, but this is the first loaf. Take a look. It looks nice. It is. It is. Sounds nice. Even though, even though we wouldn't eat a hot bread, but this is already nice. New bakeries are opening up here all the time, introducing sourdough bread, dark rye bread, healthier options, and so on. And moving away from the baguette and towards more healthy eating, with our variety, of course, they expect us to present something in this iconic building. And that's exactly what we're doing with the team that we have here. Now, they need to make up for lost time and achieve the standard they have set for themselves as absolute luxury hotels on the Arabian Gulf. Hundreds of trucks deliver the provisions. Dirk Haltenhof and André Kaiser, the head chef of the Fairmont Hotel, can finally draw on the unlimited supplies while checking the deliveries. We're normally not here every day to check everything personally. We have our specialists for that. But we're always there initially to say, all right, that's OK, but that should go back. With the avocados, the important thing is that they're not too soft like this one. This one has a small dent here, that's no good. That won't do. While most other luxury hotels in the Gulf import nearly 100% of their food, Haltenhof also relies on local produce. We went to two different farms during an agricultural exhibition. We found out that there are 12, 13 farms next to each other, and they're huge. They're so big that they actually grow fruit and vegetables all year round. I didn't know all that before. I'd already been in Dubai for a few years, but I was very surprised to learn that we actually have fruit and vegetables in all colors and in all shapes and sizes. Fruit and vegetables for the Raffles and Fairmont hotels are delivered here centrally. A cutting-edge wash station, based on Japanese technology, is used to process them. Everything needs to be germ-free before it can go to the various kitchens. It doesn't really save a lot of water, but it saves on chemicals because we use it in a really sustainable way. No chemicals. The only thing that goes into it is sodium chloride, which is then mixed with water and run through the machine here where the electrical charge splits it into base and lye. And then the pre-washed produce goes into the lye and then it's disinfected. 
Culinary director Dirk Haltenhof's job now is to go over every dish and presentation with his head chefs for the various departments. This also applies to the products from the huge bakery and pastry shop, located inside the belly of the hotel tower. Elaborate sweet works of art can be created here using the latest laser technology. Chef Michel Prete and his team are supposed to present their ideas for the grand opening today. All VIP guests will receive a sweet surprise in their room as a welcome. Now, the management needs to decide which one. No discussion. Need five extra. We do it. You take it. You put it in the room. Because we don't have the same item. Eh ben you, uh, you find it. If we don't have, you coordinate with your manager. Yes? Just different. Eh, Rushi, no discussion. Stop. No take. We need to go in the room. We need the MD presentation. They will do it. Hello? They will do it. It's fine. Uh, Supriya, we need to be the same. Huh? Okay. We have two minutes to display seven more. He and his team will only be able to start with the actual production once the VIP gifts have been chosen by the hotel's management. Okay, so here we go. So it looks a bit more ergonomic and we're good to go. Until the grand opening, the hotel employees, friends and relatives act as guests to give the crew the practice they need. Four pieces of peri-peri mango puchka, one portion of salmon bale, and four pieces of goat cheese kebab. It's the first course. Okay, and the second course, one portion of hand-pulled butter chicken, one portion of kundan kaliya lamb shank, one chicken biryani, four bowl of dal makhani, and assorted bread basket. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Masala Library is supposed to become the best Indian restaurant in Doha. To this end, Dirk Haltenhof has poached his former colleague Sanish from Dubai. This restaurant has also only been training for a few days. Restaurant manager Ray Lawrence has a difficult task ahead of him with his multicultural team. So we have our two uh, team members from Morocco and two from Africa. So they're the first time to work in the Indian restaurant. And some of them, they don't even know anything about Indian food. They haven't even tried Indian food, especially one girl, she's allergic to spices and spicy. So that's one of the challenges I would say at the moment. But for the last five months I working with them, uh, they really did a great job. So if you go and ask them, they're as good as my uh, you know, Indian team members. So I'm very proud of the way they are moving forward. Along with it, there is a makhani gravy espuma, which is basically a base of tomato gravy, and it has a cream and butter, so it's a very rich in a flavor. Okay. Yes. Thank Please you. enjoy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Plus, as we talked about earlier, so we need to explain the guests how they have to mix the butter chicken. So what do you have to do to give it a good mix before you enjoy? So, you know, you get a good mix. So it mixes the gravy. Then, so I do for you. So the next one you can do by yourself <laughs> to have some fun. So. Here you go. Chef Sanish is stepping up the pace in the kitchen. More and more trial guests arrive at the restaurant every day. There's a stress test before the grand opening to push everyone on the team to the limit. They're running out of time. We are still fixing the areas. Where to come what and how exactly the operation moves and easier flow, the workflow, how it's going to happen. So we are still fixing. It will take maybe another, you know, a couple of more weeks for us to settle down completely. You know, we know a, a proper way and how exactly we need to go, the proper flow of operation, everything come in place. And once that in place, then it's smooth. Instead of weeks, there are only a few days left to get the Indian restaurant up and running. The service staff have to work with an ever-increasing number of guests every day. So the jigal tanda has inside them ice cream, so it has a syrup again, and it has a marai inside. Are they sharing the dish or is it individual? Yes, you can share the dish. There is no problem. So, so, so can you can get the small, uh, small plate? So get them a sharing plate first, then the spoon as well for them to share. Okay. So next time when we bring the dessert, we first bring the plates for sharing, then we bring the dish and the cutleries. If they're individual, is okay. We come, we drop individual, they enjoy. No problem. Sometimes we feel like you're scared, they don't know anything, but for sure you have someone who is 
who you, is here for you. He's on our shoulder. We can tell everything we want. So he makes sure that we go together, we grow together with others. So it gives us uh, this power and this confidence to do this. Many of the employees have never worked in a luxury hotel with its special demands and fail at the simplest of things. For sharing, what we do, Palash? Plates. Plates. Okay, we do not pick up the dessert if you don't have a sharing plate. So please ensure sharing plates on the table. There will be a lot of feedback for the crew at the Indian restaurant before the grand opening. <laughs> 